In this video, we're going to look at the strategic components of planning and educational planning. Now, we're going to look at the characteristics of planning strategy. The first thing we need to look at is should tend towards a national approach. The planning must tend towards a national approach, decision making, that we maximize the output from available resources. Secondly, the strategy should encourage a zero based budgeting decision. It should apply to both period of plenty and scarcity. Thirdly, should go beyond the traditional process of unconditional incrementalism. In that case, that is process which may allow, which only allow marginal changes instead of directional changes. That is, change in major direction. Now, let us look at the fourth part. In the area of the fourth part, planning strategy should prioritize the plan and project. It must prioritize the plans and projects. When this is done, it will help to incorporate the strategic components. Now, now let's look at the strategic component of planning and educational uh, planning. Now, the first thing you need to look at is the goal and target setting. What is the goal that is making you to go into the plan? What target have you set? So you must know have a goal and there must be a target that you need to meet in any plan you intend to embark on. If you have not been able to set the goal and there is no target, then the plan is definitely will lose focus. So the next thing you need to do is the policy and, policy and the plan design. Now, you need to have your policy. The what policy is it? There must be an institutional policy or national policy policy or the state policy which you're going to work with. You cannot work in isolation. You have to find out what policy is available. If you are working within an institution, what is the institutional policy? If you're working within an, um, a, a ministry, what is the policy governing it? And even within the institutional policy in the area of education, what do you need to look out for? You must look at the national policy also because whatever plan you have, it must reflect the policy and that will determine the kind of design that you have have in place. Now, the next thing you need to do is to consider the resources. What are the available resources? You have to take note of the available resources. And how can you assess these resources? And how will you be able to utilize these resources? Is this something that is doable? If not, what are you going to do? You need to consider the resources. And in considering the resources, the costing will come in. Because when you have the resources that are available there, sometimes you may not have access to it directly, except you pay for it, because everything has to do with money and the process you put in place. So you need to attach amount to each of the process that you're going to use. You need to put in a cost on each of the process. And once you have been able to put a cost on each of the process or each of the facility or resources that is required, then that will help you do a proper budget. To now know the lump sum that will be required at a particular time. And that budget must be well spent out. How you're going to utilize the budget also must be well spent out. And in a, this case, it is always very important also to have an evaluation whereby you can know whether the money is well spent, monetary and evaluation, whether it's well spent or not. Now, you look at the means. The means has to be everything that you need to be able to accomplish this. In the area, yes, you need cost, you have costed. If you have costed, do you have the means to meet the costing? Do you have the means to meet the budget? How will you raise that money? How will you be able to come up with the finance that is required for you? These are things that you will need to consider while you are planning. Then the implementation process. The implementation process has to be incorporated into the plan. As you are looking into the plan, the plan will be very good, but the first thing you need to look at, this thing that we want to do, are we going to be able to implement it? Because that's where the policy has to come in. The resources has to come in. Oh, this is good. We don't want to have, let me go back to the C334 that today people feel, oh, this C334 system failed. Why did it fail? Because the planning procedure may have had faults because that is what I suspected. Because at the point of planning, they would have been able to know do we have the manpower to man this classroom? Because that thing failed first. They had the resources in this area, the facilities were available, the equipment were available, but there was no human power to man those facilities. And there were no teachers to teach those things using the facilities. So it failed. So what would have happened during the plan is to find out whether the human resources were available. But if they were not available, how would they have been trained and at what point will the implementation have started? So when you are planning, the implementation process must be incorporated. Now you talk about the monetary and evaluation, which is vital because with the monetary aspect of it, it will help you to see whether the 
uh, implementation is being carried out the way it is being proposed, the way it is being planned. Is it done that way? What you say you are going to do? Are you doing it? The way you are now evaluating it, the evaluation will now bring in, uh, a, 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 a help you to come up with a mathematical method that will uh, help you to uh, know whether it's actually factual, whether you have been able to achieve or you couldn't achieve it at all. Because on the surface of it, you may think, yes, we have achieved. But when you go into a mathematical uh, formulation, you attach some values to what is being achieved, you'll be able to come up and say at what level this has been achieved. This is where monetary and evaluation come in. And in the area of monetary and evaluation also, where you are planning, you must plan along who is going to monitor and how what will this person monitor how will he monitor because the instrument need to be there and if the instrument is not properly spread out and how it's going to be done is not properly spread out it will affect the monetary procedure now let us look at the area of priority for the planning strategies and in this area we are going to look at the work of Laman until 1978 what did he say we we'll look at the effectiveness because we're looking at area of priority when you are having a planning strategies you must look at the area of effectiveness how effective in with each stage be in what we want to incorporate the, the efficiency in the area of efficiency you are looking at the monetary value the input is it equal to the output is it is it commensurate to the output that has been put out because if you put in so much money and on the long run what you are bringing out can is not commensurate to what you have put in then it is not efficient but in the area of eff effectiveness it could be effective because you have been able to uh, meet what you, you have been able to attain definitely but the cost of attaining it is not considered in the area of effectiveness yes you have met with the policy set in place you have met with the standard set in place you are effective quite okay but what about the monetary value were you able to actually uh, maximize with the monetary part that what come the utility is quite vital the aspect of the usage of every phase that you need to do, every resource that is being expended, everything that you need to do within that process, how usable and how feasible it is. How feasible it is. Is it doable? Is it something that is not doable? Because sometimes you will have a very bogus idea. You will have an idea that is, oh, this is a wonderful idea. This is a great idea. But that idea, you need to putting it into practice. Is it something that is feasible? Is it something that is doable? Is it something that is achievable? These are things you need to consider in the process when you are dealing with uh, the, you prioritizing the planning strategy. Then you look at the compatibility. In the area of compatibility, how compatible is it for each stage you are doing? For that plan you are coming up with, how compatible is it with the existing plan? How compatible is it with the policy? How compatible with this, with other things that surround it? Remember, we have talked about the SWOT analysis today. Because if it is not compatible, definitely it's going to have a hinge somewhere. So the compatibility is very vital. Then the productivity. What will be the outcome? Because these are things you could measure where if your monitoring and evaluation is apt, you'll be able to measure it and know how productive is it. This plan, how productive it is, will it really help us to come up and improve on our economy? Will it really help us to come up with the desired labor that is required? These are things that are required, especially in education. Now you look at the accountability. The accountability is very, very important. When you are planning, you must plan the accountability process. Because if you do not plan the accountability process, definitely there are some persons that might not do the job or when they do it, some money might be valued to a wrong way. So there must be accountability. Somebody that is responsible for what is being done. You must be, have somebody that must be responsible, somebody that will be held for what is being done. Now we look at the impact that that plan will have on the masses. It will have on the individual and it will have on the society. These are the things you need to consider when you are prioritizing your planning strategy.